we're back, and I'm back to doing scary shit. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> this one is four nightmarish true scary stories. Uh, when it comes to horror movies, I like to watch things that um, take me off guard, that aren't expected, where um, they don't do the same typical moronic mistakes. Uh, I like movies that aren't predictable. I love a good twist. And I also have a soft spot for anything that is based on a true story. If it says true story on there, more than likely I'm going to buy it or rent it right away and uh, watch it. Uh, the lady's the same way. So we're going to dive into this. I'll leave the link to the original video in the description below. Let's do this, bitches. I'll never forget the time me and my brother snuck out past our bedtimes to explore an allegedly haunted house down the block. Yes, I said bedtime, as I was only 10 and my brother Luke was only 12. When our parents said goodnight to us, I went to Luke's room and we took a couple hand-powered flashlights with us and hopped outside through the window. Luckily, his room was on the first floor. Those hand-powered flashlights worked by constantly pushing in a little trigger that would create light inside the lens. They were noisy as hell, but they were convenient. Once we were outside, we just walked down the block, and in two minutes we were there. It was rumored by all the neighborhood kids and teens that the place was haunted. Everything about it was creepy. The older, more antique design of the house, the isolation from the rest of the houses, and the broken windows and rotting wood. It seemed perfect for a horror movie. We went around to the backyard. And it was yard. This was all my curious and confident brother's idea. I was scared shitless. See, that's what I never got, man. When it came to doing something stupid like that, just say no. Nobody remembers those old school drug commercials, you know, just say no. You can apply that to other things. It's possible. I've done it. You can do that. Just be like, hey, I'm going to go check out this old abandoned factory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out around, I don't know, midnight. You wanna come? Nah, bro. Nah. Ah, I'm not about that life. I'll see you when I die in heaven or hell, wherever you're gonna go. But I'm pretty sure you're not returning tonight. So no, what the hell's wrong with you? At midnight, you wanna go check out the creepy old abandoned warehouse down the street? You lost your mind? No, no, I don't wanna go check it out. The door was locked, as expected. I felt a bit of relief, thinking we might just go home. But my... But no, sir. There's windows. And we came with this crowbar. We're getting in this son of a bitch. We're getting in here. My brother made a shocking move next. He grabbed a plank of wood laying in the grass and began smashing the already chipped window. Eventually, there was enough of an opening to unlock it and slide it up completely. We hopped inside and began cranking those noisy-ass flashlights. Immediately oh, yeah. after entering the house, we both picked up on the fact that it was like 90 degrees in there, which was odd as it was a September night in the mid-70s. There was no graffiti. Okay, I, I think that could be easily explained. The house, well, no, you went in that night too. It should have just been congested. I don't know. That's kind of odd. Graffiti or anything anywhere. In fact, it was but relatively empty. Then again, I mean, if, if the house is boarded up and everything, there's no way in. You're keeping all that heat in there. So the heat's got nowhere to go. The house has just been cooking all day in the sun. So that heat's just going to store up. Uh, you kind of explain it. Empty besides a few pieces of furniture that were clearly not worth taking along. It seemed we were the first to enter the house, shockingly, or at least from the back. We went upstairs to the main floor. I don't know about you guys, but I always enter from the back. It just seems like the right thing to do. Or from the little den area and continued cranking the flashlights. That's when we heard the slightest crack in the floorboards from right above us. We both jumped. I tugged for Luke to leave, but he told me the place is old as hell. It's just house noises. I stopped cranking the flashlight at this point, and I urged Luke to do the same, but he only called me stupid for suggesting something so ridiculous. Then there was another crack in the floorboards from above us. 
he began walking upstairs. I didn't. Why? Like, if you hear a noise coming, I can understand if it's your house. If you hear a noise coming from your house, you're like, all right, who the hell's in my house? And you're like looking around. And you want to be cautious. And you know, you know that the noises your house makes, you know, what sections of the floor creak. And if you're hearing a noise, you're like, all right, nobody else is in the house but me. And it's creaking in that one spot, which isn't right. Somebody's in the house. You grab a weapon, you grab your phone, and you creep up there just to kind of look. I mean, you're not going to go up there and like, who's up here? You know, you're not going to go up there like an idiot. Because if it is someone and they got a gun, you don't want to be seen. You want to get out of the house, call the cops, have them come and deal with it. <clears throat> now, I can understand that. But this is not your place. This was an abandoned fucking warehouse or whatever. And you heard this noise and you said, let's go check it out. I guarantee you these two people were white. I can guarantee it. I can almost guarantee that. In fact, it's probably like a 99.9% .9 possibility that they're, they're, they're white. I didn't want to go up there, but I was not about to stay down there alone. That's when you leave! I followed behind him to the upstairs. There was a door that led to a room right above where we were standing. Yeah, they call that the kill room. Jesus, man, get the hell out of Dodge! I begged him not to open it, but he must have just wanted to be the big, tough older brother. Well, now he can be the big dead older brother because as he was opening that door, I'd have been outside. I'd have never made it up the steps. I'd already been outside and on the way home and like, whatever. I'll just have to tell my parents that, you know, he gone. <laughs> he gone. This is it. He began to reach for the doorknob while still cranking the noisy flashlight. But then he stopped. I was confused. I could see in the dark he was moving his ear up against the door, listening. Man, if you pop up some dumb shit on my screen to scare me again, I, 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 will, I, I will do nothing about it but jump because there's nobody here for me to punch. ...for something. Silence. Of the lambs. Hello, Clovis. It's good to see you again. Then, the most deafening, nightmare-inducing moment of my life. A single bang on the door from the other side sent my brother staggering into the wall in pain, covering his ear. Man, that would have been a different kind of story. It was like, and then the most nightmare sound I've ever heard happened. <laughs> it's like Pee Wee Herman in the next room over. It's like, oh, no. We dropped the flashlights and ran straight out the back door and back home. We were so loud when we got back that our parents found us out. We told them what happens, but they naturally didn't care and grounded us both for a week. It's a homeless dude. Two nights later... I woke to the sound of something from outside my window, and... Nope. Dud. Nope. It's your flashlight cranking. Nope. That dude followed you. You a damn idiot. ...air of brightness sneaking in through my slightly opened blind. I sat up, and my heart sank when I realized it was the sound of the crank to my flashlight. Oh no, 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 no! I stood up and looked out the window, and that's when it stopped. There was- Dude, don't you pop up on my fucking screen doing some dumb shit. Don't do it. I, in fact, I, I strongly recommend, I, I would advise you not to do it. There's nothing but complete blackness out there after that. Got me hearing shit up in this damn house. That's all right. It'll take him a damn minute to get in this damn room. Couch right there. That's right. See? You gotta be smart. Uh, I woke the next day barely remembering what happened, and I still hope today that that part was just a dream. Dude, F that, man. This is a story that happened to me recently. Okay, all right. I mean, that was a little uh, unsettling. That would have creeped me out. Like, uh, yeah, F that. I was still in my first year of university, and I've only just made friends with a few other students. Albeit an old and notorious university for its ghostly figures and paranormal activity, 
The campus janitors and security were all too familiar with unusual reports. The art and design faculty was subjected to the oldest campus of the four separate buildings, and the block my class happened to progress in was the allegedly haunted section as well. Why it was not? late in the afternoon, just before five, and my friend needed to use the restroom. She asked me to accompany her, and I obliged, seeing it as an opportunity. And that was like, all right. Giggity, giggity to rest my eyes from the strains of the projector. She rushed into one of the stalls, and I waited outside the bathroom. And then I heard the awful sound of... Oh! Ah! <laughs> oh, God. I love me. <laughs> I love me so much. I'm so disgusting. Ah, good stuff. Feeling that she would take longer than I initially anticipated, I decided to walk back to class without telling her. He left that bitch. <laughs> he said, I'm gone. I'm out of here, toodles. <laughs> All that nasty shit coming out of your booty. I'm out of here. <laughs> I thought you were hot, and then I heard that shit. <laughs> oh, God, that's a dick move. As soon as I sat down, she barged into the class, calling out for me. According to her claim, she heard the sink's tap turn on and thought it was me playing a prank. As she opened the door, she saw no one else in the restroom besides herself, yet the other stall next to her was locked from the inside. Thinking it was someone else on the toilet, she asked if it was me. No answer. Curious. She looked down the gap but saw no shoes or legs, yet heard feminine whispers and humming from that particular stall. I'm out of there. Then again, it could be the air vents. Maybe it's somebody else in the other bathroom. I doubt there was just the one bathroom, but they said it was feminine. So the other bathroom would have to be in the boys' room. Hmm. Frightened, she left without saying another word. Class ended and we went home, but the thought of the occurrence remained. We later learned from one of the janitors that no one should ever be in the restroom after 5 in the evening as there is a known ghost of a woman who resides in the stalls. Needless to say, as juniors in the university, my friends and I decided to never use the bathrooms after the designated time. Screw that, I'd never be in a damn bathroom, man. You would never see me in there. I'd be shitting in the trash can in the hallway. I don't give a damn. I'm not in any way saying these claims are true but everything I told you is true in regards to what I was told. Whether these things I was told by my friend and the janitor are true or not remains a mystery to me. This happened a few months ago while I was serving in Japan as a missionary for the Mormon church. I was in the country for two years and my time to return home was approaching. I was in my last year. And don't do that robotical voice shit. Like, that's not even cool. Area, Kyoto, a bustling tourist attraction. An ancient Japanese city I've wanted to visit all my life. Anyway, it was late at night, and my companion and I were knocking on doors to see if anyone had interest in learning about Christ. We came across this one apartment building and decided to give it a shot. In Japan, there are three kinds of apartments. Super luxurious suites, Decent apartments with four to five rooms total, or ghetto as crap. This apartment was the latter. We were on the second floor of this building and knocked on this one door. A middle-aged man in worn-out clothes answered with an awkward smile on his face. Hello. Will you come in? Being the kind missionaries we were, we introduced ourselves and asked him if he would like to learn about what we believe. And screw that. Some creepy ass old man, middle aged man, whatever, answers the door with a creepy face on him. I'm like, you know what? You look like Christ might have already saved you. You good, we gone. There's no need. There's no need. I sense that your soul is saved. You know, it's just it's saved. It's saved like a son of a bitch. In fact I can already see the halo and, and the wings. Have a good day. Instead of giving us a direct answer, he invited us in. You. And then a smart person would have said, no, I'm good, I'm good, we could talk about Jesus right here. <laughs> okay? Because if I come in and you kill me, 
I'm going to be yelling, oh God, oh God, oh Jesus, oh God, help me, and nothing's going to happen. I'm just saying, just saying, that's irony right there. They came there to talk about Jesus, how great he is. I'm not saying it's not real, I'm just saying it's irony. Usually, in missionary work, this is a good sign, but upon stepping foot into that apartment, I knew what we got ourselves into. This apartment reeked. Jesus. Guy comes out of the kitchen, he's like, you, cake or death? What? Cake or death? Um, cake. Very well, cake it is. With the smell of marijuana and urine, his apartment was puny, a small entryway, a door on the left. The house smelled like marijuana and urine. The ultimate stoner's house. Just walk around, peeing everywhere and smoking weed. Leading into a bathroom, a small kitchen to the right, and a small multi-purpose room with a small kneeling table, TV, and bed. That's it. Judging by the way he was behaving and most of the decor in his apartment, I knew this guy definitely had some sins worth confessing. He sat us down on either side of the table and started to rant on about how he hates Christians and wants to kill them. That made my companion and I tense up a bit. <laughs> I just hate Christians. Every time I see one, I just want to crucify. Oh. Well, we're agnostic. You've changed our minds. Have a good one, sir. Have a good one. Bye now. <laughs> no, no, there's no need for us to stay ever. But the man was plastered. In the time this was going on, he drank like 10 times his weight in booze. We just prayed and hoped he wouldn't recognize who we were and what he was telling us. Then he said, I'm going to tell you a secret and you can't tell anyone. He then pulled out from under his bed a box. He opened it to reveal thousands and thousands of dollars worth of Japanese yen, and yes, it was authentic. We even examined it. <clears throat> this man was an illegal drug lord who worked with the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia group. Damn. We then realized that if this man knew what he just did and showed us, he would kill us for sure, or at least take us hostage. My companion and I feared for our lives and tried to come up with an excuse to get away, but he wouldn't let us go. He kept ranting on about irrelevant things and saying how Christianity was an evil cult of some kind. We tried to explain our side of the story, but there's no use in reasoning with a drunk drug lord who works for the Japanese Mafia. It then got to the point where we practically had to run for the door. We said we were leaving, stood up, and quickly walked over to the door. The guy then stood up and began to reach for something in a box, but we never saw what it was. As soon as the door closed, we bolted home faster than we ever had. You damn right you did. You damn right you did. Man, I'd have been gone. I'd have never gone in the damn house. The hell's wrong with you? The hell's wrong with you? What's wrong with people nowadays? You don't go into anybody's house. I don't care if you're trying to spread the, 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 the word of Christ or, or, or whoever or whatever God you believe in. You don't go into someone's house. You just don't do it. I deliver pizza. I, well, I used to. I used to deliver pizza, uh, you know, fucking whatever, I, like years ago and stuff. I never went in anyone's house. That's just stupid. They're like, no, you can come in. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to wait right here, right here. Well, I might be a minute. That's okay. I'm paid by the hour there, buddy. You take as long as you need. Your food's getting cold, not mine. You want to take an hour? Take an hour. I'll just have to make a phone call. I'm going to be right here, okay? Okay. Now, the only time I had to go in someone's house is when I delivered furniture, and that's a different damn story, okay? Or repo furniture. That's a different story. They're expecting you. Now, when it comes to, like, stuff like this, hell no. You done lost your damn mind. Was him sobering up to find out he had revealed his deepest, darkest secrets to two Christian missionaries from America. My deepest, darkest secret is every now and then I do talk. Everyone wonders what do they look like, you know, with a vagina. I'm just, I'm just saying. I've talked. You've talked. We've all talked. Okay? Let's be honest with ourselves. At one point in our lives, we have done the talk. Okay? Don't lie to yourselves. Had this man not been drunk, he probably would have killed us. For all we know, he was reaching for a gun as we were leaving. Gun! It's close to me. When I was 15 years old, I was home alone one night for whatever reason. 
My bedroom was on the first floor, right next to the living room. Mm. It's a strange mm -hmm. setup. I had the door shut and was playing video games. Which means when you I lived heard in a, a mobile strange home. sound come out from in the living room. It took me a few moments to figure out that it was a tap on the window. I stepped through the dark living room and out the front door and checked the bushes by the window. Nobody was there. I went back to my room with the door open and resumed playing the game. Five seconds later, another knock on the Man, fuck that. Nope. No more good. No more good. That's happened a few times here where I'm at. I'll hear a noise outside or like, uh, I'll hear something and I'll go outside and I'll check. Now, I don't go outside without a weapon. I look like, like, I probably look like the serial killer. Like, I'm pretty sure my neighbors are like, there he is again. Fucking weirdo. Because when I go outside, I go outside beast, man. I go out balls just fucking, I'm ready. I'm ready to throw down when I go outside. I go outside, I got my black hoodie on, my black jeans on, or I know I have black work pants on, and I got my boots on, laced up, ready to go, steel toe. Because you know what? If I drop my weapon, I will kick the shit out of you with some steel toe boots. I don't give a damn. I will just do it. Went out there, I got a flashlight, I got a, a knife on my side, I got a knife strapped to the uh, back of me, and I got a machete, okay? I got a machete. It's already unsheathed. I got, because it has the little cord, I got that around my hand in case they try to knock it out of my hand, I just, ha <laughs> ha, I flip it back, and I got it again. I'm not dropping it on the floor. You got to be smart. You got to be smart. And I got a flashlight. And, um, you know, so I, I go out prepared. A lot of these people just go out with a kitchen knife. They're holding it the wrong damn way. Like, for example, I told you I have knives everywhere. I, I have weapons in every room. Are you really surprised? So with kitchen knives, all right, so this is your actual blade. And this would be the actual dark side. Or, or not dark side, but the dull side. This is how you need your blade out. Okay? This is how. Because when you, yeah, you know, that's how. Most people do it this way, and you see it in horror movies and shit, they always got the blade into them. That ain't gonna do shit, okay? If you're coming out like that, maybe. Either way, this way, it's coming out like that, and you're still gonna get the same effect, you're still gonna do the same thing, but you wanna, you know, yeah. So you gotta be smart about it. Most people don't do that. Told you I got blades. I already got one on my side, too. I shouldn't be surprised. In the glass. This dude, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the ghetto. Okay? Don't be surprised. I got weapons everywhere. You would just lock your doors, lock your windows, storm doors locked, hard doors locked. Everything's locked. We had an alarm system, bars on the window, everything. Okay? I grew up in the projects. I, I know how it is. This time I ran to the front door barefoot, ready to chase the pranksters. Nope. But again, no and one was in the bushes. Them. No one was even in sight. I chose to just ignore it from here on out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On my way back to my room, there was another knock. I ran over to the window to try and catch them. There wasn't anyone outside, but I felt something right above the tip of my toes. I looked at... Dude, don't... Don't... No. Alright, you look down and what? ...down, and saw the dark shadow of a figure sitting down by the window. I think I was back in my room in a matter of two seconds with the door locked. I was hiding under my bed trying to call my dad. The knocking on the glass continued from outside. When I explained to my dad, he called me crazy for not calling the police, so he told me he would for me and to wait in my room with the door locked. I'd say about five minutes later, the knocking stopped, and ten minutes later, the cops arrived. Just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Yeah, that, uh, that, that, that's just, all right, with cops, I know they got a lot of shit to do. I, I know cops are very busy. They're not just sitting around, despite what people think, sitting around at the fucking donut shop eating Krispy Kremes and shit. And I get some cases are more important than the others. I understand that. But with certain situations, you need to put some pep in your step. Hustle. For example, this, this would be one of them situations, you know? This is one of those situations. Here's another one. All right. Um, with stalking. Police can't do a goddamn thing. Except collect evidence. 
They just they just need proof. That's all they can do until something happens, like you get hurt. That's when the cops can step in. If you get hurt or killed, then they'll they'll step in. Isn't that a little bit late at that point? Like if you've got all this evidence that somebody's stalking you, somebody's, you know, meaning harm to you, and you take it to the cops, they should be able to arrest the other person. That's intent. Like that 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 should be like I'm pretty sure you can get arrested for that. And they should act on that. Instead, they wait for somebody to get hurt or killed before they jump in and intervene and like, oh, well, now, now you broke the law there, buddy. For now, restraining order. Restraining order until you break the law. Now, restraining order, <clears throat> I think it was the lady that told me about this. I don't remember the full story. I, I really wish I did. But somebody, uh, there was this guy that was being uh, stalked that he... Uh, by, by someone online and um or it was a girl being stalked by someone online she she went to the cops pictures of messages sent to her and you know all this shit and this girl was really obsessed with this other girl you know it was a female fan really obsessed and uh got to the point of crossing state lines you know uh, the girl got a restraining order on the one girl but it got to the point of she wasn't allowed it within a certain amount of feet of the girl. But that's it. So that when that girl would leave her house, the stalker chick would come to her house and leave packages and stuffed animals and love letters and shit. Like, that's fucking creepy. Like, they can still do that. Just because you ain't home doesn't mean they can't come to your house as long as you're not in the house. And come in here, leave some shit, laying around, do whatever the fuck they want. I mean, at that point, you know, what else does what else does police need? Like, dude, you were in my fucking house. I don't know you. I filed restraining orders on you. Like, granted, you're not violating the restraining order, but come on, enough's enough. There's got to be a point. We got to change some of these laws in this world. Some of these laws are just downright dumb as shit. The figure was gone, but there were no signs of entry or exit, as all the doors were locked and all the windows shut. Still, we haven't seen or heard of anything since then, but it's still creepy as hell to think about. All right, so that was four nightmarish, true, scary stories. Um, a little unnerving. A little unnerving. What would you guys think? Uh, you know any other scary stories that uh, that are true? You know any videos on YouTube that are true? You know, uh, like um, creepy videos that are true? Uh, see if we can get me to jump again. That last one, man. I'm still, I'm still fucked up by that last one. That one really scared the shit out of me. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Later, bitches.